what is going on guys welcome to video number 18 and not in the last video but in the video before that we connected our content.php file to our database right here and since we only have one database that we created the first two steps was the first two the first two steps right here they're not going to change so this looks like a perfect chunk of code to make a file for and put it in our includes folder so i'm going to go and take their first two steps right here and i'm going to copy these I can just delete these out right now. Go ahead and create a new folder. And we'll go ahead and put this in. And I'll save this to our includes folder. And I'll go ahead and call this connect.php. Yep, replace. Okay, so now let's go ahead. Oh, I got it. Text. Your bike. You need to change your tires. <laughs> uh, where were we? Yada yada yada. Okay, so let's go ahead and source that file in that we just created. Whoa, where are you going? Let's go ahead and PHP open tags. I'm just going to tab this, move it out of the way. And again, we're going to use the PHP function require once. And we put it in our includes and we called it, what was it, connect.php. Let's go ahead and close this out. We can bring this back together. I'll go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and reload our page. Nope, we got an error. Okay, let me pause this. And can anybody tell me where our error was? And you probably didn't even do it because you spelled includes right. I'm an idiot. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's reload it. Perfect. Okay, so we sourced the first two steps out into a new file, and then we brought it back in and just used up one line of code now to kind of consolidate our PHP. Well, we're not going to do that with our second and third part of connecting to our database because these things are going to change. We're going to pull in different queries and ask different questions questions on different pages. But a page that's not going to change. I apologize. A step that is not going to change is our close connection down here. What we're going to do for this is we could either create a new file or we could just add it to our footer.php file. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to find my footer.php file. And I'm going to go ahead and paste this in here. Okay. But, okay, so our footer.php is going to be on every page of our website, but we might not be accessing our database on every single page. So I'm going to go ahead and run another PHP function with an if statement that lets us know if our database is set, then close it out. But if it's not set, then don't even worry about it. So just follow along. So it's going to be if is set and our variable was connection. I'm going to give it curly braces and if you guys aren't following along with this video go ahead and message me and I'll kind of walk you through it through email so this is what it's saying right here it's saying if this connection called variable this variable called connection is set then run this course so let's go ahead and save it and let's hope that our browser looks the exact same no it did not okay my SQL closed three is not an M source link let me go ahead and pause the video all right, guys. I find out. I found out why our browser spit back. Okay, so it might have worked. If the include didn't work for you guys down here, go ahead and use the PHP function require. Again, I'm on our content.php down here at the footer because require will ensure that the file is included as the parser looks required prior to the parsing of the file. So again, if this doesn't make sense to you, it's require and um, include are the exact same thing. So depending on what browser you're using, maybe that's why it spit it back to me. Maybe it worked for you guys on the first time. Let's go ahead and reload it now. Okay, perfect. So what did we do in this video? We went ahead and we sourced out the first two steps of accessing our database. We put it into a file called connect.php and then we pulled it in with the PHP function of require underscore once. And then we did the exact same thing, well, sorta. We just took this 
and, in, and included it to our footer.php file and then sourced it back in with the PHP function of require. So hopefully you guys followed along. If you guys have any questions with this video, let me know and I'd love to answer them for you because this is kind of tricky. And uh, good luck with this. I'll see you guys in the next video.